Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm well. I'm well. My name is Sarah Garigal, and I work with the Living Archives Project, where we are collecting stories of how COVID-19 impacted various communities in Charlotte-Mecklenburg County. Today is May 3rd, 2023, and this week there were 55 reported cases of COVID-19 in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg County area, which actually shows a 43% decrease mm. over the last two weeks. Therefore, each subject is comfortable not wearing a mask this morning. Great. Renee, would you introduce yourself? Hi, good morning. My name is Renee Warner. Um, my official name is Frida Renee Warner. I am a charlatan. I am uh, work, live, play in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm originally from Virginia, so not far, um, but still in this corridor. Um, my stature and physical um, attributes, I am African-American. I identify as black and a female. I am pretty tall for most people, I believe. I'm 5'9" and a half. I think I've shrunk some. Um, I am, I feel uh, medium build and probably the the type that needs to do a little bit more exercise, one for my health and cardio, but to feel better and be able to buckle my shoes. Um, and I have two, I'm sorry, yeah, I have two children. So I'm a single parent right now. We'll get to probably some of the interesting things that have, have happened to me. Um, but uh, not by choice. I am really um, learning to take care of my family and do all the other things that, that people do to live and, and feel good about um, their lives. I am a director of a transitional jobs program. So I hire folks that have barriers to employment. And so that's kind of my claim to fame and my passion. Um, I finally landed in this place where I can help individuals be better. So I just wake up every day to help people find them be their best selves and to live their best lives. Um, and that includes my children. And as we hurry around and I fuss at them more. I should probably treat the people I hire better than I <laughs> treat the children. Um, so that's me in a little bit of a nutshell. That's amazing. Well, yes. thank you so much for sharing, Renee. Yes. So you said you have two kids. I have two children. And what are their ages? They are 16. My pride, my, my both of them, my pride and joy, but my I have a boy and a girl, so oh, both of twins. them are my favorite. No, they're oh. 16 and 13. 16 right and 13. Now. Yes, wow. my son is 13. But as she's my favorite girl, and he's my favorite boy. Aww, oh, yes. I love that so much. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. And um, for work, so that's how I met you mm -hmm. while you were working on your job. What do you do for work? I am actually, I, I go around a lot to find people in the community who have a barrier to employment. And so they, um, we can hire them for a temporary role where they learn uh, some, you know, skills, customer service skills, some um you know, soft skills, dealing with the public and just building. It could be computer skills, what have you. So we are, when I was at International House at that um, festival and um, whatever, I forgot what it was called. But that type of event where I'm trying to meet people and wanting to share what we do. Um, I hire for our OTC store. So we have a free store in the the south part of Charlotte, where people can come. If, as long as they're a North Carolina resident, they can get medicine, um, over-the-counter meds, just like you would find in Walgreens or CVS. Amazing. It's absolutely free. We love, love, love it. Our hearts are in it. We make decisions with our hearts to help people get um, all the medicine they need. If you're on that you know, wavelength of uh, that school of thought that medicine can help people, we are trying to help folks. Um, trying to reduce emergency room visits where people can take a Tylenol and not have to use the emergency room for yeah. even infants. We have children's medicine, adults, pain creams and cold medicines and it's amazing. allergy medicines. Allergy <laughs> medicines. There is Especially perfect today. <laughs> I know. I wish I had done that. I wish I had said that. <laughs> so yeah, that's um yeah, we have durable medicate, you know, um, durable medical equipment and different things like that. Oh, so wow. it's really interesting. We meet t tons of people. We are a nonprofit. Uh, the claim to fame for them, for our organization, though, is our free prescriptions. We also have a prescription program. No, However, I'm not a, a pharmacist, but I can yeah. definitely tell you a little bit about yeah. some of that. 
So yeah, we serve all of North Carolina folks who don't have any insurance whatsoever right now. Okay. And as you can imagine, the Medicaid expansion just happened, so we don't know really where we're going. Um, we're happy that happened because it's going to pull in about 200,000 people who were pretty much struggling. So. Yeah. North Carolina is a little late doing that, but we have that option, and it may change our service model. But for right now, we do only serve folks who have um, who don't have any other option for yeah. insurance. That's amazing. Yeah. And it. how long have you been working with Medicis? I've been there five years, so I started in 2017. Wow. Yes. Wow. And what would you say? I know you probably don't know this off the top of your head, but if you do, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. How many clientele do you guys generally serve? Yeah, I kind of know a general. We we do about 16,000, 16 to 19,000 uh, prescription patients. And so they have multiple prescriptions, of course. So, yes. you know, some people take two or three. So I'm not sure what the, the medication count is, but they dispense that feverishly every day. Wow. Um, we have two. Day. Yeah, we have two robots. So the sixteen thousand is a month. I'm sorry, yes, okay. and then um, every day, our our we have two robots that are like, it the pills are you know set in. We do have to have pharmacists that um, oversee that, but it bottles it, caps it, puts the label on, and they can do about a thousand a day That's with amazing. zero error because we have only about four pharmacists and five techs, farm techs. Okay. So that's in our pharmacy. I'm like, I'm in there high and by. Yeah. <laughs> but I know all about it because it's, it's really amazing. That's it is. really cool. It I've is. I've never heard of that yes. before. Yes. You that's... have to come down. I do have <laughs> And to anybody come. who sees this needs to come. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, yes. I will be. I will yeah. be coming soon. Um, and that all of that is completely free as long it's, as yeah. you qualify. Absolutely. You know, that's Mm -hmm. So prescription is a little bit more um, rigorous, of course. Yeah. One, they have to have a health home, so we can kind of help them. We have a social work team that works with them on uh, getting the enrollment process. But, of course, um, emergency room can write a prescription. We just have to have a prescription to fill. Yeah. Um, so they send it. It's just like normal. They can We can get it e-scribed in. We get tons of facts or e-scribes yeah. a day. And um, and there's an income requirement. Uh, we want to try to serve the folks with the highest need. Um, the store, on the other hand, where I hire people for the over, over the counter portion, uh, anyone can shop in there as long as you're a North Carolina resident. Uh, we just ask for some valid ID, picture ID, so that we can keep track of folks who are coming in. We allow shopping every. I hate to say we allow, but we have to manage the, the medicine course. and ration it out. But we um, have people shop every 30 days. Okay. Um, you know, we make decisions with our hearts, too. So I always say, like, if someone comes in and wants yeast infection cream, we don't say, got to come back in three weeks. You're too early. Yeah. So, you know, and if someone comes from South Carolina, Rock Hill, and they're like, oh, I work up here and I heard da, da, da. We let them shop one time, at least, yeah. but we can educate them that it's really for North Carolina residents. Yeah. But we're bound by those param parameters from our, where we get our medicine. Pharmaceutical companies give us free meds. Yeah. Um, and uh, then our main partner here is Second Harvest Food Bank. So wow. maybe you'll get okay. some interviews from someone yes. there but they're a good, great partner they give us all the medicine they get through feeding america so they okay. do food and they don't want liability for medicine so yeah, we're like hey we got it that's amazing. we know the people who need the medicine we'll get it out oh i love it love it love it that's amazing and it meets such an important need oh yes such an important that's need. that's where i feel i mean that's where that essential when we yes. get to this talk where we worked through yes, throughout absolutely. I never took off <laughs> yeah let's let's dive deep in that how how did COVID-19 impact your job mm. and all of that I can I want to say the first day when we were in a meeting you know you heard a bunch of things kind of you know in the news and what have you but we were still kind of plugging away working but we had a meeting a pulled um kind of quick meeting to say we need to close because we don't know what's out here what's happening and we again that OTC store is public people would come in um, we never had a, a maximum number of folks like everything had to change so I remember going from the meeting like leaving early they were like Renee you need to go close the store and I went and kind of held the door. Now, I'm a dramatic, so I feel like I was pulling the door. I know I wasn't like, but people were standing there like, we wanted to come shop today. Yeah. And 
I'm like, I'm so sorry because of the COVID, you know, we were like the COVID or we didn't know, but COVID yeah. was, COVID is, um, you know, right now we have to regroup and, and figure out we will reopen. We don't know at what point, but I'm so, so sorry. I just have to kind of close for right now to keep everyone as safe as possible. Um, I don't remember. I don't think we were wearing masks at that point, but um, so it changed the model of the store. We closed, had to regroup. Um, I just remember making my own kind of signage um, to try to serve curbside, but we closed down to, to get our everything, you know, redone. I made some signs to ask people to help us, um, you know, not touch everything, kind of know what you want. And just because yeah. we were in there in a store with millions of bottles so we can clean all that you every know. day yeah. um i was cleaning my wiping my groceries down and things like that but um when that switched we we had everybody the service went to outside so curbside only okay. um here i am like little things i was doing i was taking notes from like the even dunkin donuts and other places that were putting up curbside so we were like oh we can do our sign like that or we can because i don't really have that background so yeah. we kind of had to make it up um, and then we had, we came up, uh, I guess there was a task force formed at work. I was on that because I managed the store in the warehouse at that time. We shut down from volunteers coming in. I should have mentioned we have, we can't do it without volunteer help. Yeah. We have a, a kind of a large warehouse, um, and a lot of medicine in there. We have to get it sorted. So volunteers were coming in, touching everything. It just became a, anytime people touched something we were cringing because yeah. we were like we gotta we gotta go wash to clean that and then um i'm just rambling kind of i'm just thinking no, through um what was happening uh pharmacy uh, they could still work they were our we're mail order so most everything went out in the mail for that but our side was haywire um from learning how the you know the medical community washes their hands in every room from room to room uh changing gloves from room to room things like that so we really i just we had a lot of talks we have a lot of support from atrium health at work so they would help us out with some of the information on how to manage yeah. and cleanliness and all that um and just going to work, we got our letter. I'll skip up to the essential letter to that we can drive because everybody else was kind of shut down. Yeah. I think people, um, I, I vividly remember some seniors that volunteered with us calling saying, we're not coming. Yeah. They stopped. All of our consistent, you know, volunteers that loved on us were like not coming. We had some uh, clients and coaches, some of the folks who might have that learn differently and yeah. they would come in with their coaches. But they were if they were in a residential facility, they couldn't come out. Yeah. And we kind of said, no, we don't yeah. want you to come either because they're in a um, what do you call that? Like a group yeah. living situation. Oh, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that it was kind of crazy like that for a while. I was going home and I mean that's going home life but I would go home and I'd have to stop I couldn't hug my kids um we oh yeah the the uh school issue that shut down and they were they were sent home and I had a few workers that had children and could not work so we were essential and then her kids are at home so I had a single mother I remember we were like what is she gonna do she can't she had to go home with them they were yeah. elementary age and then a baby and um we couldn't she couldn't work and so for us thankfully at work COVID pay we had a great accounting person <laughs> who kind of kept up with all this and so they had um COVID money funding started to come through and so we could pay some folks um that had to go home with the kids yeah. um and it was sort of I'm not sure all the details of that but that was one issue because my goal in in my job is to help people build financially and we want to pay them and then when they were actually is no work no pay it's an hourly wage yeah. so for her to go home she couldn't work and I was like I can't send anything home because it's personal identifying information on everything we have and yeah. we don't know how you can help at home and you know yeah. so we were able to kind of help her out to stay home for a little bit and then the child care we were helping employees try to find child care so yeah. they could work because they were essential yeah. um at the time my husband was working and well he worked for the city of charlotte they and he's pretty up there where enough supervisory wise where he had to work and manage yeah. figure out what to go to do but once they got settled he was off one week or two weeks and in one week so they kind of staggered yeah. we never staggered at our job um, but so they were, my kids were able to stay home with him. 
as he kind of went stir crazy about <laughs> staying home because he was a busy body always yeah. doing. Um, but yeah, I think I'm trying to think that was kind of the, the gist of how I see if I wrote anything about work. Um, yeah, it, from everything, I guess, moving to buying signage for when we moved into where well, we can manage COVID, we'll do six people at a time in the store. Yeah. We wanted to not, you know, not go over 10. And so with maybe a couple of volunteers, um, we would have six customers come in, two people kind of working, maybe volunteer helping us out back and forth. So we just went through it um, with that. The the knowledge and not trusting and not, mm. I should mention, so we had with work, some of the office folks could work from home, but we still had to work. So social workers, they work from home. Our development, which is a big deal for a nonprofit, we raise money. So they work from home, but it started to be a little animosity. Not bad, because we all have big hearts, but it was yeah. little things I noticed. People would go, like, we're in here all the time. Like, yeah. you know, and some people get to work from home, and it was just unheard of, kind of. But we liked having, like, chill time at work, like, yeah. the break room. It's only about 40 people anyway, 38, 40 at that time. And um, then it came to, down to just our store and the pharmacy. And there's maybe... 10 or 12 in there okay. so it was so quiet and we didn't have to fight for the microwaves yeah. and we just we kept to ourselves we used to kind of share medicine because we were medicine we had yeah. a medicine cabinet instead of a coke machine right yeah. so um but we would have like indigestion what do you call it? like a meprazole or something for indigestion yeah. and Tylenol would be in there and some things but people stopped using you know yeah. shared medicine at that point so that was a little change I, I noticed um did you notice, um, in terms of the clientele that you served, did you notice that the numbers went up, increased during COVID, or did they stay the same, or did they decrease? So, for the store, I think we all, across the board, it decreased. Okay. Um, the store, particularly... It's really surprising to me. I, I don't know why. I would assume that it would have increased. I will tell you... But the with us the store our clientele were mostly seniors and they were the ones like not coming out even though we went to a uh you know service model where we were curbside yeah. people had to kind of get it first and then they would you know some people wouldn't wouldn't venture out just you know for fear of just you never yeah. know it was airborne and it was that was where we were we didn't know where we were getting it from so yeah. and especially the older folks were kind of they just didn't trust anything so they our clients usually or customers wouldn't come out at all um we did find where people would come out and shop for them so we first we had a model where people um, would have to show their own id and you have to shop yourself um we had very few people that were like homebound and we but we just could not service those folks but we had to turn around and, and try to service seniors because they were our base for the client base and um and they really felt like they needed the medicine. There were a lot of supplements. We have a lot of medicine. We have a lot of, um, I should say, vitamins and supplements. Vitamin C was so huge. We had to get it out. And we had a lot. So we could not say, you have to be present to win. You know, we like, we're going to give it to you. If if your daughter wants to come and, you know, get medicine for seniors, then we let them do that. Um, we had a lot of zinc. Zinc was a big deal at one point. Huge. People were talking about, oh, you need to be taking vitamin D. You need to be taking... So we then... And then we had a lot of hand sanitizer and then we had none and we were, it was so, I can't remember which, how it went, but, um, and then we turned back to have tons of hand sanitizer and even now people are offering it. I know some of the atrium and there's a warehouse somewhere that has like, they can't believe how much my boss went to see and she's like, they have so much, like it's going to go to waste. So, um, everybody was making hand sanitizer. Breweries, we got, we did a some type of um like a grant request for for a brewery that has some hand sanitizer yeah. coming out looking like a beer bottle or something but we were just like it's crazy, crazy. um but the the people started not coming for fear and then we get requests from like atrium health who were opening a covid relief like wing or um not hospital but a residential area i think they were turning something into this covid um like recovery center okay. and they'd ask us for you know all we could have the cold medicine all the things that can kind of help people along that little yeah. the path not little but yeah absolutely bananas yeah. so so now let's let's kind of shift so before we 
started this incredible interview. We did an activity together called a hand map. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you would like to share from your hand map? Uh, uh, what sticks out to me is... Um, and if you want to pick it up, you can do that. Well, yeah. I see the hand map, the middle three lines, like the palm reading. I wrote career changes, parenthood, and then single parenthood. Mm -hmm. So that's sharing what happened to me during <laughs> during COVID is so odd or not happened to me. Did happen to us, but um, you know, we, we always think about all these things that we never talked about. Terrorists, you know, I've been married for a while. I was married for a while. And so we talked about terrorists from 2000 and we had the snipers like uh, these words we never talked about pandemic came up and i was thinking my husband and i were like we this is another thing that we are going through like we never thought we would be going through all these life world changes and different yeah. things like that but um so pandemic came and we like i said he was home kind of going stir crazy he was avid basketball recreational basketball player and he coached my son's team every age you know yeah. and um and I was just so crazy with COVID because I could see him like antsy, couldn't do much, you know, basketball's contact sport, couldn't go to gyms, couldn't work out, gyms were closing. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, kind of tackle parenthood together most of that time. But during COVID, in actually 2020, the, the height of everything, he passed. So we lost my husband and it wasn't due to COVID. <laughs> So, so yes, yeah, it's a, it's, I'm very, I'm really okay about it now, yeah. um, because we're doing good, that's why it switched from parenthood to single parenthood, because it threw me for a loop, mm. a, a man, I felt young man, he was 46, and just was very healthy, uh, took charge of his health in all, every way that I knew of, yeah. and, um, he passed in his sleep and I hear all these things. It didn't help me before, but they say angels pass in their sleep and all that. I'm just like, whatever. But, you know, I want him there. Yeah. Um, so he passed during COVID, which really jarred my family because the two, the kids were already work like virtual at home. And I saw their personalities kind of changing because they're behind the camera. They don't want to turn the camera on or you know, just odd, feeling uncomfortable. How do you get to know your teachers? And my husband's there, but he's really not there. I feel, Lord, God bless me for, or forgive me for like fussing at him about, you're not really paying attention to them. I have to be at work. You know, we had a lot yeah. of little challenges right yeah. before, but um, he was really all around amazing. Like really, he was amazing. It showed this arc that I wrote of um, the people that supported us during COVID I have to say during our grieving because yes. and we still are but we had that we had um, people over our home where it's really hard to do when COVID is you know happening so my yeah. good friends made a little note on the door to say like a few at a time and don't kind of overstay your welcome but our culture we like people come and sit at your house yeah. and it's kind of odd. And then I even had to have someone clean up for us because after people are in and out, we got to have somebody clean the bathroom. And I wasn't up for it. And um, But we had so much. It just spoke to his personality and his, his connections, our connections. We had our church members. We have home churches from Virginia. So we had two different home churches support us. We had our colleges. We went to two different colleges. So our friends, I have a sorority members, and my sorority supported me. He played basketball, and the basketball teams from his college supported us. We had wow. so much. Our church here, the kids, they were in the mission group and in the choir, and they brought the kids, like, big baskets of stuff. Um, the basketball team, they did a visual. I mean, it was so much, so much. Um, and then again, I mentioned he worked for the city, so um, they did a parade by our house because they couldn't love yeah. on us. Um, that was kind of that came about during COVID. People doing graduation parades, and this was a, a I don't know, just a memory in memory of him. They brought almost every vehicle that the city could have had. Now he was a graphic artist. He was over the the team that did the signs and then yeah. he was over the loops and folks that did um put loops in the street like the electrical make the light okay. change so he had a, a large team but this day everyone from the 
like they are, they called them bucket boys, the ones that went up in the yeah. to the light line poles, yeah. to the lines in the street. All the representation of the city trucks came through, and some of them had big signs because he they made signs, yeah. and they had signs out. And I'm telling you, the bigger thing I saw through COVID with this was that so many men that usually don't show their feelings shared with me just they loved him and they were cry they cried it was amazing I just thought you don't know he he thought y'all were mad at him <laughs> just like maybe I don't know remember two or three days before he's like oh they hate me at work because he was a stickler for yeah. not crowding the lockers you know they're that type of group was they come in have lockers and not really desk space and office space but he would like be on them and he'd be like a little I don't know, maybe a little bit too much of a warden, but he was very like that. He hadn't even been in the military, but he was so good. Um, and I just wish he, I know he knows now, but I'm like, he, I'm like, y'all, he just thought he was getting on y'all's nerves and all that, but they just loved him. It's like, he was so much of a light and a good example. And yeah, he was uh, amazing. And now when I say single parent, here I am having to, manage his car or my car and he had a truck and just even the thermostat I'm like he used to tell me he used to draw stuff for me because he was an artist but yeah. you know he could freehand and draw we have art in our house that he painted yeah. and he's like see look he got this right here and these three lines and I'm just like just fix it you know <laughs> and now a little bit stuck but I'm like I should have been listening yeah. yeah I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cry on this camera but he was awesome, if anybody. His name was Sherman Warner the second, And he, um, yeah, he was, you know, not, not many like him. He was a country boy. Turn, you know, we both were from rural areas. And so we've been here for 20 some years. And um, the house is his pride and joy and, and our family. He did everything a lot for us, more than I know knew <laughs> at the time. Little things, chasing moles out of the yard. Like I have to do that now. <laughs> So, and I have to take kids on vacation and I have to pay attention. Yes. Whereas he did that. He was the one that's like, I did it, but he was really the one, you know, going to bed early because he's going to drive us back the next day and I could sleep you know, all the way home and now I got to drive back and I have to be the one saying, yeah. we got to go in early because we're leaving tomorrow. Yeah. But, um, but he, yeah, he, he saw a little bit of, of COVID and felt a little bit of that. Now I say not due to COVID. For us, the grieving and the, the grieving just extended that first initial part because they couldn't tell us what happened for months. He passed in September and that was excruciating. We had this, you know, first we had to figure out, get the funeral dates because it was longer than I thought. It was long, like over a week before we can get a date because so many funerals. Wait, what year was this? 2020. Oh, so it was right yes. at the height of the mm -hmm. pandemic. Wow. Yeah, so we, um, and then I didn't know if it was, do they think it's COVID? Like what, I don't know what the process yeah. was for the autopsy, whatever they do. I guess it's an autopsy, but they, they didn't give us an, a reason. And um, until, wait, I want to say, Oh gosh, was it the end of March into April? Yeah, the end of wow. March, and that's me still having to call and still having to wow. wonder. Yeah, I'm just and then my son, who he would say, um, you know, my husband, my husband was home, and I called. So fire the firefighter, the fire truck firefighters were the first responder, and my son kept asking weeks after like did the firefighters tell you did the firemen tell you what happened to dad did the firemen because he thought they were the ones to know and he's old enough but i guess it was just stuck to us yeah. stuck in um differently and um i do want to mention i didn't write it down but it's bringing me to this the racial unrest was happening too and so even before he was he was gone i would worry about him being out being a black man he was African American, so and I would worry about him having pent up energy because we were back and forth. He couldn't really work. He couldn't work with his hands and do what he needed to do, and so I would worry about just him flying off the handle with the wrong police officer. Um, it was so it was so sad that I had to think about that when we called. You know, when I called them and the ambulance came and then police officers came, 
And I panicked so badly because I called, I was calling my girlfriend. I was like, somebody's got to be here because the police are here. And I just don't want them to misjudge the situation or not. I just didn't know. And I thought, this is, this sucks eggs to be thinking about my son and the police are in here and he you know like what if they think he did something I, I just didn't know it was like we heard about so many wild stories yeah. and all sides of stories and I just was like somebody's got to get here because it's just me and yeah. the police are here and I just kept zoning on the police and it's it's terrible oh um gosh, I'm so sorry. uh yeah yeah I'm I'm so well about it now I mean yeah. I'm I'm talking about it and I know people probably like how is she just going but I um I um I don't know I'm just I don't know but that part they, they have turned they turned it around because they did come back to my door and wanted to check on the kids they called um there's a trauma care wow. portion of mm-hmm. or um area in the police department and they called and talked to me like extensively about the kids and how they could support and wow. it, it was so wonderful <laughs> after after that initial yeah. um I the, I recognized, I didn't recognize, but two p- police officers came back and one was there that day with me. And um, the other is was my neighbor's son-in-law. Did not even know no who way. he was. <laughs> we had met him some years ago at a, a cookout. Yeah. But, um, and I do remember that he came in a uniform at the cookout. And so that was a thing. But when he came back, I was like, I did not know. I didn't know who was there. I wouldn't recognize anybody yeah. that day, but I'm so glad. And they came back to check on the kids and it was kind of they don't talk much you know we were just standing out again we can't come inside we didn't want people in the house but we were just standing on the porch and I'm trying to push pull you know it's like pulling teeth for them to answer questions how are they doing and all but I'm just I love that show of support just them coming back in uniform and so um yeah we had support from like everybody (laughs) everybody and um in the city was phenomenal and just knowing how they had to operate as well um, yeah. it's just crazy in regards to planning your husband's funeral yes. during that time frame was that a challenge it was we decided i know he would wanted to be buried at in his hometown so mm-hmm. he's from danville virginia so we had to go i mean i did a lot i think i went a couple of times but um on the phone and I think I could send things, um, but it was a challenge just in getting the scheduling. Yeah. And um, let's see, oh, it's odd that I don't remember it's if okay. we. Yeah. I don't think I wore a mask, but I know I think the. But what, did they have restrictions on amounts of people that could come? They, yes, we had different options, so we had to. Talking about, you know, what I told you about him. We had to open it up to people. People were saying they were going to come anyway and be outside, and that's what happened. So we had a few people were inside. People just came to support, and they just were there outside. Um, Very respectful. They weren't, you know, we hadn't gotten to the casualness of it all, like people wearing sneakers everywhere. So everyone was still dressed as best they could, I guess. And they went to, we went to the graveside, you know, and they came like in droves. I remember just looking back in the car and like the way the street was, you could really see down the hill and curving and it was all lights showing that they were in line for the funeral, like recessional. So that, um, a lot of people came out even though, so they kind of risked it to show their respect or pay their respects. Um, And then not I don't know I don't remember a lot it's of okay. it it's so crazy that I don't remember it's okay. sometimes um, when we experience so much trauma and yes. grief our, our minds just pause until we're ready yeah. to remember a lot of it I um and I think I've chosen to just remember good times yes. and not because I went through quite a bit and I probably imagine. cried my eyes out um, my good girlfriends. I remember being like taken to dinner, and we, I could, I don't even remember what I ate or what. You know, they were just talking and yeah. not really talking over, but I think they were trying to keep it light. And I just kind of don't remember. Now I, I do remember seeing a fire truck that day because our, me and the kids just notice we hear it every day now. 
and it's just a trigger. And it was it used to be a bad trigger. I mean, I got to work one day and I bawled because I had just passed the fire truck and everybody was like, what is wrong? Like, what? It's okay. And, you know, they were trying to not say what's wrong. But yeah. I'm like, I think I, that's when I recognized it was a trigger. And the kids, we were somewhere. We were eating ice cream and we heard a fire truck and they started looking and, you know, just kind of seeing where it was and I noticed I said they do it too yeah. we all are like very keen on yeah. that sound and seeing them but then we switched that that's why I'm so happy we I finally recognized that it could be I'm gonna take it as my husband's there saying mm-hmm. I got you that's just a signal he's because yeah. of course it's Charlotte and of course they're all the time yeah. running out but I, we take it as like I say, hey. His nickname was Snook, and I was like, hey, Snook. Good morning, Snook. You know, we always Aww. are seeing him. So I'd say we'd be going to Shay's first game at um, her flag football, one of her sports, and we saw him. We saw the flyer, fire truck, and I was like, well, Dad's like he's coming to the game, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that was the the thing, and you know, I I was hoping it wasn't COVID, but um, it turned out to be. Uh, Heart attack, so yes, a very healthy man, I thought, but um, and that opened the eyes of a lot of people. So that was, I mean, we had COVID happening and people, you know, hearing about all these deaths. We had a death in our family, my sister in law's father, which is the closest at that point, but um, then he being something totally different, it just really showed our circle like tomorrow's not promised all the things you hear people we were living it and so um more awareness i wrote down self-awareness and just awareness and um doing what we you know gotta do like i said i took my kids to new york because i'm like we gotta just live yeah gotta be smart about you know being able to live when we get back home but i need to take them and be enriched and yeah and that's what he would want we were doing that before he passed so Mm. Yeah. Well, Renee, thank you so much for sharing. I cannot, I know you're in a good place, but I cannot yes. imagine that the pain that yeah. it took to get here. And, and yeah, truly, truly, I'm so sorry for your thank loss. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, I don't mind even sharing the mental health part of it while yeah. you're saying I'm in a good place. And I love that you're a therapist, but. Um, I, I did a couple of therapy sessions, probably not enough. Yeah. Um, one of my groups that I said helped me, I did a um, grief class, grief share at a church. Okay. And that really helped a lot. Um, oh, so, so but even COVID and just being, I feel like I'm an advocate for mental health therapy, any type of talk yes. therapy people can do. Um, I had, like I said, I didn't do enough, <laughs> but I'm good right now because of the little things I learned and the people I met, um, and a little bit of help. I I will put on record. I had to, and you know, I had to, a little bit of help with the uh, serotonin uptake or something. Yeah. I I took some medicine to try to help me take the edge off, and yeah. I think my levels were way off. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, cortisol. Stress, it really impacts your body. Absolutely. Um, Thinking about work, uh, because I love it so much, but we went back to have a, we had an event probably too early. We went bowling together and there was an outbreak. We had not had any issue. Nobody had been working like in the office. We were doing so well. And then we had this bowling and I'm thinking we had open pictures I think the bowling alley had just opened up they had open pictures of drinks and I'm like why aren't they doing individual drinks and it was just kind of scary and then we found someone there tested positive so we had to close that's the first time we had to close and that was my husband had passed so it was 2021 okay we went through almost a year and a half really wow it was I don't remember when exactly but um yeah, that was a bad, made the wrong decision to, to have some. But we were so starved and wanted yes. to, our social committee, we have a social yes. committee at work, and they wanted to do something we thought would be easy. But we were, like, touching the same balls. We had, again, not individual. The spread was out, and people were getting their stuff. Yeah. And, but I didn't get COVID, I will say. Yes. My, my coming out full circle, um, I, nor my kids haven't had COVID yet. 
that we know of, yeah. unless it was very, very mild and we didn't even think to test. We, yeah. We've tested a few times and didn't have it. Yeah. And I actually didn't, um, what do you call it, acquire or get, whatever, get COVID until yeah. 2022, okay. last August. Last August. <laughs> and um, I don't know where. I'm trying to think if I figured out where. Uh, but I don't, I don't think I remember. It's 2022. I'm still, like, not remembering. So, yeah. But I was, like, almost, I felt like patient zero at a party. I went to my friend's 50th party. And when I got home, I didn't feel well. And I'm like, oh. wait a minute. And I had to tell them. I was like, I know how this feels. Like, oh, no. You just, we had stopped kind of sh- staying away from people. And, yeah. um, and I had to say, oh, I got back and I didn't feel well. And my first symptoms started Sunday night. And I got home Sunday. So oh, I had no. to tell them for the folks at the party. But, uh, but, happens. Yeah, it was but a you're okay. mild case yeah. considering yeah. everything else. Yeah. Um, throughout the whole thing, I did. Um, we we follow kind of doctor's orders. I trust doctors, so there are some people who are very leery. All those conspiracy theories and all that, you know, that's stressful. I mean, you're just reading this, and then we have not dissension but different different thoughts and within a family um my brother didn't believe in vaccines period and so here i am like you know are you gonna really like not if it gets to employment or your vaccine are you gonna not take care of your family not employment wise and so um we just had all those talks um but i did decide of course again we followed doctors suggestions and I felt good about it and I got I've had them all my kids when they were able to um, got vaccinated Uh, my son has a heart condition he's very um, he's like out of the woods we don't we're not under doctor's care or cardiologist care right now but he um, had a heart he had heart surgery when he was right before he turned two he had a pediatric catheterization and so they suggest we kind of keep him. You know, he was yeah. very, um, what is it called, the high risk. And so yeah. we wanted to be vaccinated. We would get flu shots for the same reason, so yeah. regular flu shots. And so we were, um, and I feel like it's helped us. Um, there is time to tell whether it's, it was something bad. I hope the yeah. government wasn't doing anything vindictive. But that's in our head. You know, it's all yeah. in our heads because people talk about all types of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Before I know yes. uh, to honor and respect your time, is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we finish? I don't. I think um, that's been really good. Um, no, uh, that I share. I did the. I've shared who I am and yeah. I hope people can and, and then it'll help remind me who I am. I hope I don't go into a different direction, but um, the trajectory I'm going on, I feel like I'm intelligent, I'm, I'm resourceful. I've learned throughout COVID and again, been made, you know, my confidence is boosted since mm-hmm. I had tragedy within and COVID that the, the silver linings have been that I've I realize I can manage a store. I can be very flexible. I'm usually a type A person. So, um, and I'm just hoping, um, you know, to continue. And I love this project. I will say I'm thankful that to be able to archive it and to just record. Because I wouldn't have done it on my own. (laughs) And so um, hopefully it's helpful in the research. Yeah. You are so strong, so mm-hmm. resilient. You have come out strong through so much, yeah. the, so much during the last few years. And to just see the way that you love your children, mm-hmm. the way that thank you. you love those that you work with and the services you provide. Thank you thank for you. all that you do, Renee. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate you sharing your story. Yes. I will say I'll dedicate the talk to my husband and his honor and his memory. And that's why I'm strong. I've always, I've been getting progressively better because of him since I've been, since I met him. And so um, I do feel like I can get through anything. So thank you. I love that. Thank you.